Hello again. Now today I'm going to do weathering, a subject I really really like and I wish I was much better at it. So this isn't a, isn't a tutorial, it's a this is my experience of. As always, we'll start by stripping this wagon down, which is an Acura scale HUO, coal hopper. So I've used the internal user private owner vehicles as well because if this goes horribly wrong these are the ones that I don't mind losing the least even though they are quite expensive and it will hurt. There are literally hundreds of this type of video on YouTube. Some of the people that are doing it are much better than me. And I'm going to use just three paints for the rusty bits. So that's going to be dark rust, black, and a Humbrol 62, which is leather. And that's just to give it tonal variation. I'm going to do the insides first, because it's easier to do the inside with a brush, because otherwise it goes everywhere with an airbrush. Plus, when it gets when it's dried, you also get that streaking effect with the so long as you keep doing the brush strokes in a vertical direction. And it looks a lot better when it's dried. And this is where I take a big deep breath and go for the outside. The most important thing that I've learned or watched on other YouTube videos is to keep the paint uneven. So it's not the same shade all over. I'll, I'll link a couple of videos as well in one of those tab things in the corner, up there or down there. I know, it looks awful, right? But it doesn't matter because this is only the undercoat. I painted the body and then I painted the underside, which you can see I, can, I left the... The chassis as so I could hold on to something and then I painted it sort of a dirty black. The wheels were painted the same colours as the chassis because photographic evidence would suggest that they are the same sort of shade of colour. So if you go onto my Facebook page, link down below in the description, I've got a poll or series of pictures up at the moment of all the projects that I've got upcoming so but I can't decide which one to do first so if you click on one of the pictures the most likes or comments on one picture will be the winner or the one that I do next transfers or decals or whatever you want to call them were purchased from Cambridge custom transfers he does a quite a range for the HUO model. And as always, it's a gloss coat underneath and then a varnish on the top to seal them all in. Uh, and oh god, it's the masking bit next. Uh, it's not that bad, especially on these. It's only four bits. Fairly easy. So, the magic ingredient, hairspray. You can just spray it on straight from the can and I'll try to explain the mechanics behind it. So you spray it on, let it dry and then do a second coat. And then when you do your paint coat for the colour of the wagon, which is this place going to be grey, you just lay it on like you normally do in thin coats, leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes, half an hour, come back to it with a wet, stiff paintbrush and just start rubbing where you want to take off the grey paint. This should just reveal the rusty, cruddy paint underneath because the water off the paintbrush soaks through the paint and then reactivates the hairspray underneath which gives the peeled rust effect so 
you can do as little or as much as you wish. Little, a little reveals little chips, and the more you do it, the bigger, chi the bigger chips there are. But I, I must stress, the grey paint, or the paint that you want to chip off, has to be water-based. And in this case, it is MIG, or ammo by MIG, uh, it's just their plain grey, which is the closest I could get to rail grey. Once I took the masking off the numbers lettering, and then went with another stiff brush, just dry brushing over that, just to pop out some rust spots in the lettering numbers. It looks a little bit harsh at the moment, but then I went over everywhere with a dark wash or it's more of a filter really. I put, I, I put the wash at, at the very top and let it drain down and then where it hadn't gone down I just dragged it down with a flat brush to give that streaking effect and as you can see it does tone everything down quite nicely. And I'd just like to give a disclaimer. So this is what I would uh, call a form of art. Now art is very subjective. Not everybody will like it. But if you do, and you're happy with what you've done, then it's great. And the hardest thing to do is actually doing it. It takes a brave person to, well, do anything to an out-of-the-box model. So this is me having a go. I'm not the best at it. I'm probably not the worst at it either, but that's, again, that's subjective. So, anyway. So there's the three that I've done in this format. And they looked pretty good, if I do say so myself. I'll be doing some more in the near future in a different format. So watch out for that one when it comes along. Thanks for watching. See you next time.